Hi guys, it's Emily and in this video I'll be solving an auxiliary view problem. Now the purpose of auxiliary views is to create the true shape of an inclined surface that's been foreshortened in the principal views or planes. Now we're working in third angle projection as denoted by this symbol and that means that we're concerned with the horizontal plane, the frontal plane, and the profile plane. So if I make the folding lines that separate these planes and label them. This up here is our horizontal plane, H for short, and then below it is our frontal plane represented by the letter F, and then P, which is our profile plane. And we can see that we have been given two views, one in our frontal plane and one in our profile plane. And first, I just want to make extension lines that connect our two views. And I'm just going to label those extension lines. And so now what we want to do is we want to identify our inclined surfaces. And those inclined surfaces Um, can be found by looking at the edge views uh, where we see these slanted lines. And we can see that these lines are not true length lines because they are neither parallel nor perpendicular to our HF folding line or our FP folding line. So that's why we want to find auxiliary views of these two surfaces. So we can see from, from the highlighted, the currently highlighted uh, inclined line that it goes from extension line one to extension line three. So in our frontal view, we can see that this is our inclined surface that we will be working with. So this will be inclined surface one. And then if we highlight this other slanted line, we can see that that line starts at one and ends at extension line two. So if we highlight this inclined surface, this will be inclined surface two. Okay, so now I'm going to start by finding the auxiliary view or the true shape of inclined surface one. So we always start from the edge view of that inclined surface. So we're gonna be first working in the profile plane. So the first step is to create a line that is parallel to our edge view. And I just drew a line overlapping that uh, line and I'm moving it at a distance away from, um, from the original edge view of the line. And I think I'm going to move it this way actually. I know I'm moving it a bit further away. Um, that's because I want there to be enough space for me to draw without uh, crowding without it, like things being too crowded so like if I were to like have moved this over here then I would be drawing my auxiliary view in this space it would be kind of it would be a bit uh, crowded so that's why I think I'm going to move it down here and I accidentally moved my uh, one of my circles from my symbol over here. So I'm just going <laughs> to move this guy a bit further up. Okay, so I know it's a bit further away, but we can make these tick marks to show that these two lines are parallel. Now the next step is to label our inclined surface one. So we want to label all the corners with either letters or numbers. I'm going to choose letters. 
And this will help us um, map out um, our points in our auxiliary view. So now the next step is to make extension lines that are perpendicular to our auxiliary view folding line. But before we do that, I'm going to label my auxiliary view folding line um, and I'm going to label it P1. And the reason why I'm labeling it P is because we are in our profile plane here. And the one just stands for our first auxiliary view. So now we can make our perpendicular extension lines. And I'm just going to make those by making first a line that is parallel to my um, to my P1 folding line. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm placing this extension line on the other extension lines uh, on my edge view of inclined surface one. And then we also want to label these. So I'm labeling this three prime. And then I'm going to copy this line twice and place it on my edge view on extension line two. So now this is two prime. And then once more, I'm placing this line on our edge view line on extension line one. And so these lines, remember, are perpendicular to our folding line P1. Okay, and so now all that's left to do is to plot our points that we labeled in our frontal view onto our new extension lines. So it really doesn't matter where you start plotting, you just want to make sure that you have enough room. So I wouldn't start plotting points all the way down here. I would start maybe at a distance, a small distance away from your P1 folding line. So I'm just gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna start with point C. So we can see that point C is on extension line two. So I'm going to plot C on extension line two prime. Okay, so we have point C. And I'm gonna go in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to go from C to D. So C to D, we can see that point D is about one squared length away from C. So I'm just going to make a small line that is one square in length and then move that onto my line. So point D is there. And then D to E, we can see that point E is an, on extension line three. So we can plot that on extension line three prime. And then E to F, is four or five, five squares in dimension. So I'm just going to take this line and place it on my extension line three prime. So we have F and now we go up to A and we can see that point A is on extension line one. So if I make a line going up to extension line one, oops, 
then this is point A. And then A to B is about three squares deep. So I'm just going to take this line. We can, oh, and yet we can see that this line represents line A to B. So now I'm just placing that on our extension line one, because B is also on extension line one. And then we just connect B to C. And that's it. We've completed our true length, or sorry, our true shape of our inclined surface one. And it's good to label this true shape, TS for short. And so that is the true shape of inclined surface one. We would do the exact same process for inclined surface two. Um, so I will set up the process or I'll set up um, the steps for that just to run through everything again. So for inclined surface two, remember we want to first make a folding line that is parallel to our edge view. And I'm going to place this folding line a distance away from our edge view. And I made these tick marks to show that those two lines are parallel. And I'm going to label it F2. And I'm labeling it F2 because we are in our front view or frontal plane. And 2 because it is our second auxiliary view. Next, we want to label our uh, inclined surface too. So I'm just going to go down the alphabet H, I, and J. And so now I'm going to create extension lines that are perpendicular to our F2 folding line that start at the intersection of our original extension lines and our edge view of inclined surface two. So if I do that, I'm first going to draw a parallel line and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so this extension line is going on our original extension line on the edge view of inclined surface two. And so if we label this, this will be one double prime. And if I copy this line, I'm placing it on that point where we have it, our original extension line two and it is the other end of our inclined surface too. So if I label that two prime, okay, and now we can start making our auxiliary view. And I'm gonna start with point G. So remember, it doesn't matter where you start, you just want to make sure that you have enough room to draw your uh, auxiliary view. So I'm gonna plot point G here. And I'm going to go in a clockwise motion or a clockwise direction again. So I'm going to plot point H now and we can see that both point G and point H are on extension line one. And it seems as though GH is two squares in length. So I'm taking that line and just 
moving it onto our one double prime extension line. So now we have H. And now we go from H to I, and I is on extension line two. So now I will draw a line down to extension line two prime in our auxiliary view. And then I to J and I to J are on the same extension line two. And it is three, about three and a third squares in length. So I'm just taking that measurement and I'm going to place that on our two double prime extension line. So now we have J. And then lastly, J to G, and we just connect those last two dots. And now we've created our second auxiliary view. And we have the true shape of incline surface two. So now this is the true shape of surface two. And that is how you complete the two shapes of a part with two inclined surfaces. And remember, these are partial auxiliary views. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you have a good day too. Okay, bye.